Today, I would like to talk to you about conflict that takes place in the church. There is a lot of conflict that goes on in the church. There are three major types of church conflict according to Speedily Us and Paul Kutlaus of Church Fights. One of them is interpersonal conflict, the contest one has when different parts of the self compete with one another. So, for example, in my life when there's things competing in myself against one another, that is intrapersonal conflict. A second type of conflict is interpersonal conflict. These are personality differences that are not related primarily to issues. No, that way, hold on. Personality, okay. So these issues, if I have differences in my personality, it's not going to be based on the struggles that I'm going through in my life. A third kind of conflict is substantive conflict. This is disputes over facts, values, goals, and beliefs. These are the four kinds of substantive conflict, as mentioned by Speed, Leos, and Paul Kitlaus. Secondly, conflict also has its purposes. Conflict has a positive role to play in the congregation. In conflict, a group is energized. Congregations that confront conflict learn to be creative. These are the two major types of purposes conflict has in the church. Conflict can be properly assessed, which is my third point. To assess conflict, you want to obtain as much information as possible, buy as much time as possible, make an assessment of the individuals involved in the potential conflict, take the emotional temperature of the conflict. I think when you properly assess conflict, you can find that it is much more easily to solve. Okay, there are strategies that pastors could use to successfully manage conflict. Number, For example, number one is diffusion. This is the first step to take when conflict is public, according to Larry McSwain and William Treadwell in Conflict Ministry in the Church. Okay, to find diffusion, you know, we must be sure everyone in the group knows the facts of the situation. Ask someone to explain the history of the conflict. Refer the conflict to the proper committee for discussion and recommendation. Add people who can help move a conflicted group to a constructive engagement. Delay action until there has been time to manage the conflict. So these are things that we could do to make sure diffusion is the, is the first step we take when trying to solve conflict in the church. Once the conflict is diffused, a group can move into the uh, problem-solving analysis phase, according to McSwain and Treadwell. Number one, we have to consider all the gathered facts feelings and opinions about the conflict. Number two, list options to the problem, considering the potential positive and negative consequences of each. List each option in the order of priority. Depersonalize the option, since we are not voting on the personalities of those involved. Develop a consensus for the option that most nearly resolves the conflict, even if it involves compromise. These are steps to make sure that the group is properly diffused and and goes through these options of solving church conflict. Okay, conflict can be successfully managed in a positive way. According to gotquestions.org, there are four major things to do to resolve conflict. Develop the proper heart attitude. Meek, humble, forgiving, and patient. Evaluate your part in the conflict. 
Matthew 7, 15. Removing the log from your own eye first is necessary before helping others. Go to the individual, not to others, to voice your concern. Matthew 18, 15. This is best done in love, Ephesians 4.15, and not to just get something off your chest. Accusing the person tends to encourage a defensiveness. Therefore, attack the problem rather than the person. This gives a person a better opportunity to clarify the situation or to seek forgiveness for the offense. If the first attempt does not accomplish a needed results, continue with another person or persons that can help with mediation. Remember that your goal is not to win an argument. It is to win your fellow believer to reconciliation. Therefore, choose people who can help you resolve conflict. According to Michelle Lazuzer, Lazarek of the article Make Conflict Work for You, she suggests these tips to manage conflict. Nip it in the bud. Get a mediator. Meet face to face. Read between the lines. Ask clarifying questions. Come to a peaceable agreement. Follow up. Can conflict ever be positive? The answer to that question is yes, it can, because it helps us to grow in our relationship with God. For example, take the International House of Prayer. They have Many Christian leaders come against them saying that they're a cult, which causes conflict in their organization. However, they are taking positive steps to solve that conflict. The International House of Prayer shows, shows that they can do these suggestions that I mentioned and solve the conflict that they are facing. Well, this is all I have to say about church conflict. Most of my notes came from the book leadership handbook the management and administration by james d berkeley and i hope you enjoy it and god bless